topic of the present lecture is travelogy of gears. In other words, it can be say that gear travelogy. We know what is a travelogy. It's a science. It's a study of friction wear and lubrication. So, what is the new topic in this? What is the new word in this? The gears. It's a most commonly used machine element, and if you try to define it, we say it is a tooth field. Then see there are a number of gears. We say the gear chain. Gear number one is a hair, gear number two, three, four, five. So five gears are in mesh. And what is the purpose of this is to transmit power from one shaft to other shaft basically used to transmit the power. We can use a number of other machine elements to transfer the power, but advantage of the gears is efficiency. A loss of energy is lesser than other machine elements and that is the main advantage of the gears. Generally, when we talk about the gears, we talk about the different rotational speeds. But we say that this shaft, if there is a shaft 1, will have a different rotational speed compared to this shaft. Generally, for same rotating shaft, we should not use the gears, we will not be having any advantage on that case, except the center distance difference or from one location to other location, but not major advantage. So, generally, they are used for different rotational speeds. In other words, if the one shaft is rotating a 1000 rpm and we want to reduce this rpm to 200, what we will do? We will choose a gear ratio 1 to 5, 1000 is input is speed and output is speed we require only 200 rpm. That is a gear pair can work 1 to 5 ratio in this case. A speed reduction can happen in other ways also. We can use electronic device, much faster response, but major advantage of the gears is amplification of torque. The amplification is important word. It goes with the high load carrying capacity. It is applied high torque. Reduction of the speed, but that turns to the high torque. And that is why we say that we get amplification something like uh, uh, omega by omega n and uh, omega in or the input is a uh, 5 times more than output, we will be getting more than 5 times, almost 5 times the torque. Now, in this case what has been mentioned here, this shaft is generally located and located in the sense uh, it is not going to change the axis position, axis will remain fixed and this wheel, the tooth wheel will be rotating about this axis or axis of the shaft. We can see the some funny shapes on the wheel is uh, what we say the tooth shape, tooth profile and as a whole this gear can be named as gear, via gear wheel with the teeth. What is the importance of this uh, gear uh, teeth? can be demonstrated or can be elaborated using these two discs. Say there is a blue color disc with a smaller diameter, a red color disc larger diameter. Now, if we want to transmit power from blue color disc to red color disc, they need to be in contact, they need to be in mechanical contact. And through friction, they can transmit the power of blue can this can transmit power to the red color disc by friction. What are the disadvantages? So, friction is slightly uncertain, coefficient of friction will vary, it heavily depends on the surface roughness. Now, if surface roughness is increasing, there will be some sort of fluctuation in its speed. Whatever the speed in this case of 1000 rpm is going to we are going to transmit to the other shaft at the lesser speed then 200 of what we mentioned earlier or uh, discussed the 200 rpm if I want on this shaft there will be fluctuation 200 plus delta 
on higher side delta minus sign. When we say 195 to 205, we will not be able to get consistent performance. We will not be able to get steady RPM, which is undesirable. Another thing, there is a possibility there may not be any contact. If we say the surface roughness is going to give some sort of a variation in a speed, but there is a possibility that this disk will not be in a contact. And what will happen sometime we are getting from 1000 rpm to 200 rpm, sometime we are getting from 1000 to 0 rpm, no transmission, which is highly undesirable, almost 0 percent efficiency. From input what we are giving, output we are not getting anything. To avoid it, what we do, we try to preload these two disks. So, they remain in contact irrespective of our outside condition and environmental conditions. So, we need to preload that means, we require additional force, additional deformation, which is again undesirable. We know very well if there is a coefficient of friction, if you assume the coefficient of friction is fixed, then because of this compression force. If we multiply this normal force with a uh, coefficient of friction, there will be friction force. I mean, more and more friction losses will be there, or uh, heat generation will be there, and the risk uh, there will be some sort of deformation of the disk, and there will be wear. To avoid all this kind of complexities, tooth wheel is a better option. Now, in this case, this is what we call as a positive engagement. But tooth itself is deflecting other surface that is important for us and that is a main advantage. The question comes, how do we decide what kind of profile is important, what kind of uh, diameter is important, do we design it, do we think about uh, lubrication of these contact surfaces? Yeah, it is uh, necessary for us, uh, we say we decide the dimensions based on the torque ratio they based on the what kind of amplitude or what kind of magnifications we require. In this case, we can say that if omega p is a speed of pinion and omega g is a speed of the gear. Unfortunately, I am talking about the gear topic and again you are, we are using the word pinion in this. That is a, that's a, that's a slightly inappropriate because we generally talk of the gear as a pair single gear will not work, it does not have any use. What is the meaning? We say that gear always work in a pinion and to differentiate we call smaller size, smaller diameter as a pinion, larger size as a gear and they always work in pair. Without pairing without I say single gear is useless, it is not going to do any job unless it comes in a contact with other gear. Now, as I mentioned the dimensions will be decided based on the magnification which we require. If we require 5 times magnification of torque, we should go have the 5 times of diameter, 6 times or 6 times of dimensions. Always the, there will be limit, we cannot go 1000 times, 5000 times, 10,000 times, so there will be some limit. But before coming to that limit, let us think over, is the gear possible, what are the variation in gears? We say gears, there is a possibility the external profile and there is a possibility of inner profile. I would say this gear teeth can be on inner surface of the disc or outer surface of the disc. Question comes, what is the advantages? Uh, what are the advantage of inner gear or we say the internal gear or external gears? Should I go hard with the internal gears or should I go hard with the external gears? Answer itself comes, so when we talk about the gear pair, Internal gear cannot be matched with internal gears, so we require always external gear, but external gears can be paired with external gears. So, advantage of external gears is that it has a both a utility with external gears as with the internal gear. Another thing is that whenever we go for the hollow dimension, obviously the hollow cylinders, machining on the hollow surface is slightly <coughs> difficult compared to the solid surface or say outer diameter of the solid surface. So, manufacturing from manufacturing point of view, we can say internal gears will be slightly more complex, obviously there will be complexity in developing this kind of gear pair. Now, 
there should be some advantages that is why the internal gears are surviving yeah there are many advantages you can think when we pair gear external gear with internal gear a factor distance is decreasing center distance is closer. So, we want to make some sort of compact unit we should prefer internal gears because center distance between the one uh, shaft and another shaft may be uh, not much depends on the dimensions we say it may not be 0 it may will be greater than that, but it will be always advantages from the center distance point of view if I compare external gear versus external gears and external gears versus internal <coughs> gear. So, that is a major advantage of uh, this kind of uh, gear. Another thing is that uh, uh, in this case particularly the efficiency is slightly on the higher side compared to external to external gears. So, it depends on the situation we should prefer we are talking about the center distance we want to talk about the um, compact design we will prefer pair of external gears with internal gear again internal gears will not be able to get mashed with internal gears, but external gears can be mashed with external gears. Now, we will talk about the twig profile we say that uh, gear have advantage of because of the uh, gear surface has a teeth it can mash it can provide positive drive but there will be always option of what kind of profile we need on the gear pair and this is shown over here you can see this gear wheel has a some length and whatever the profile are the first surface obviously that may be the initial cutting plane that is the same profile on whole axis or we say the complete length wheel has the same profile. And this profile what we recommend is generally involute profile that is the advantages. We can think in much simpler manner involute profile is more like a string which is getting unwrapped from a cylinder. To think in a better manner we can show here this is involute profile it is more like convex shape when it comes in a contact with other gear obviously pinion versus gear they have a contact surface how uh, many times this is the line contact or point contact depends on the geometry most often it will be line contact because of the line contact load, load carrying capacity will be on a higher side. Now, you can see there are three dotted circles one circles two circle and three circle third circle for the one surface or one gear similarly for other with the one circle second circle and third circle what is this circle indicating it is a pitch circle diameter or uh, this circle is indicating base circle and outer circle. So, there are three circles we say that base circle, pitch circle and outer circle. Now, at the pitch circle when uh, gear and uh, pinion come in a counting they come in a counter effectively as a pitch circle diameters I will say that the pitch circle they are in a contact. When we try to compare with the disc friction disc we say they have a factor diameter equivalent to pitch circle diameter, but in reality contact is happening below pitch circle as well as above pitch circle. So, what we say this above pitch circle whatever the surface comes that is addendum and surface which is coming below the uh, pitch circle, but above the base circle that is a dead end num. So, there is a some sort of a geometry which has been utilized and uh, as I may earlier mentioned to magnify to amplify torque we require a good pair uh, gear pair generally if the torque ratio is 1 we should not use a gear. So, it will be useless uh, combination or uh, bad choice. Now, this uh, we talk about the involute profile and say the involute profile is generally a locus of a point on a line rolling to its base. You can see over here this is a line and this is a base and this line is a tangent to the base right. So, we say that is a local up point on a line which is rolling on the base. So, it, this if as the changes the uh, shaft rotation changes this will also again be tangent again tangent and tangent. So, this is a continuous process and is a rolling on the surface uh, we say that uh, uh, 
to promote the rolling motion, we know the rolling motion has a lesser coefficient of friction compared to the sliding friction. So, we give more emphasis and second thing is that they need to have positive engagement and above all, they need to have a constant speed ratio and that is a major advantage of gear profile. They maintain constant speed ratio, that is a slightly complex uh, subject, but we will try to uh, elaborate, try to describe uh, in few slides in our pleasure lecture. Now, this is a how to generate involute profile, uh, is, so you can see this is a profile and same profile is uh, shown over here and this is giving a mechanism how this profile comes out. This is a base cycle, this is a base cycle given to us, right. Now, we assume this is the initial point of a string on a base cycle and we want to unwind this string keeping the tangency between a string and a base cycle like this. A0, this is already a point on a surface. Now, this when it comes to the B1, where the point is unwound, uh, we have unwound it and the tangents comes over here A1. So, this A1 C B1 is a tangent to the base circle. Similarly, and this is the point uh, which is the next one the, from initial position is A0, next position is C1. Next, really, next when we unwind it, we assume that this is a, this is a separate portion may be slightly more than this. So, that we can handle it, we can uh, uh, handle it easily this uh, string. Now, as we are unwinding it, there is another point of C2, we say that A2 and C2 is a tangent to base cycle, A3, C3 is a tangent to the base cycle, A4 and C4 is tangent to the base cycle. Now, if we connect these points A0, C1, C2, C3, C4 that is going to give us a truth profile, that is going to give us involute profile and this is important to keep velocity ratio constant. So, whenever the uh, gear pair is in a contact they maintain constant velocity ratio and that is important uh, from a drive point of view, from mechanism point of view. To elaborate this, what we mentioned uh, on the previous slide is the base circle, this is a slightly description of the base circle, we said this base circle and this base circle and base circle is generally used to calculate all the torque or uh, all the other dimension that is a factor. Um, cycle diameter where the two discs are coming into contact, but base cycle is a point or is a cycle from where the involute profile starts. That is why we say that if this is a starting point of involute, we try a tangent, it will meet the base circle of other gear. I would say other, if I am thinking of this as a pinion, it will meet the base circle at a point, it will be tangent to other uh, gear wheel or gear and this A B is a tangent to the both. You can see that this is a intersecting line of centers, well a center a line which is connecting two centers at a pitch point and this pitch point generally we call this is a rolling motion or uh, there will be 100 percent rolling on the pitch point. Any other portion rolling will not be, uh, rolling will be there, but along with a some sort of sliding and whenever we know very well wherever the sliding comes friction force will come and we need to avoid that friction as low as possible that is why we provide some lubrication for the gears. So, what is written over here? So, the tooth curves of the mating teeth need to be tangent to each other. Okay. So, when the tooth profile of the one uh, uh, gear or is a tooth profile of the uh, pinion, it should be tangent to tooth profile of uh, gear. They need to be in a uh, at a tangent, they do cannot penetrate each other. That is important, uh, otherwise there will be excessive wear, there will be excessive damage, there will be fracture, there will be bending, we want to avoid that. So, tooth curves of the mating teeth need to be tangent to each other. Second thing is that this is a line of action, A B is a line of action is more like a, we are unwinding string from the base circle and putting on the other, so they are just getting joined over here. So, line of action is a tangent to both pinion and gear base circle. Now, the, what is the advantage of keeping all this? We say if there is a chain in a center distance, we know that will happen. During assembly, we cannot be very precise on assembling, we cannot be talking about the nanometer scale, 
when the gear itself are in centimeters or uh, uh, in meters dimension, we will not be able to talk about a very fine level. So, there is a possibility of uh, some sort of uh, change in the center distance. We said this center and this center, we cannot keep uh, center distance fixed during assembly. Maybe in one part we are able to keep this as a 50 mm, in other part there is possibility of 50.1 mm, other possibility is a 49.9 mm or 49.95 mm. There is some sort of variation, some few micron variations, so maybe the lesser than 1 mm distance variation is possible. So, if that is a situation, involved profile will give flexibility, it will still keep velocity ratio constant. Just to elaborate that, we can say let us say uh, base circle is been pushed away from its initial position due to the some sort of assembly fault. Now, again there is a base circle, if you draw a tangent, it is going to make a tangent on the other base circle that is involute profile, that is a beauty of involute profile. They remain tangent, velocity ratio will remain constant, even I know we can say their pitch circle diameter will change slightly, but not to a great extent and that is a, a good point. Now, we can uh, what is the drawback of this uh, disassembly or we say that this uh, misalignment or we say there is a change in uh, center distance is that only the attitude angle will increase if you are increasing the center distance. The question comes what is attitude angle? Is it a harmful factor? Is it a useful factor? Generally, attitude angle is been designed as for the requirement. We say that we cannot make infinity number of teeth on gear. So, we require some thickness, some width. Uh, where the gear teeth has a some thickness and uh, there is some spacing available. So, we cannot go out the infinity and that is why to maintain some contact ratio and uh, some spacing between the teeth, we require some sort of pressure angle. Uh, we say that to reduce interference, we require a gradual engagement, gradual disengagement, we require some sort of pressure angle. The lesser or la larger value will have its own advantages and disadvantages. A standard size uh, which uh, sometime back was uh, around 14 and half degree pressure angle. So, that this five few years back, uh, it was around 14.5 degree, but we find slightly more interference and, and uh, we have limit on number of teeth which can be kept for the, this kind of pressure angle that is why we relaxed it. Now, this pressure angle, the standard pressure angle is known to be a, as a common as a 20 degree. Sometime it can be kept at 25 degree also, but this is a what we call the pressure angle at the manufacturing time. When we assemble it, we are able to see the pressure angle is going to change. So, the phi is a pressure angle and this pressure angle depends on operating condition. When we manufacture, we manufacture at some uh, value, so that is 14 and half degree, 20 degree, 25 degree and when we assemble it, there is a possibility of change in pressure angle and if there is a increase in a distance, increase in a center distance of these two gear wheel, then this pressure angle is going to change. How to determine, how to estimate this pressure angle? We have some formula for that. We say that cos, it is a function of cos or the phi is equal to phi at any point. It is that maybe i may be here, i may be here, i may be here. So, phi at the i can be given as a cos inverse. We say that uh, a cos of for this uh, as a ratio of r b by r i. R b is a radius of the base circle and R i is a some hypothetical circle is a radius of that hypothetical circle. Maybe say on this line if the point is here, if I draw a connect this to with the center and I draw a circle over here that will be the radius of uh, that circle. So, it is a hypothetical circle or is the imaginary circle uh, which we construct or, or uh, make it so that we can get our results. So, pressure angle will be continuously changing first is the assembly time and as well as it will be changing during operation. And what we discuss, what we uh, do the calculation, most often we do the calculation related to the pressure angle. Pressure angle related to the uh, 
pitch point. I will say that what we have mentioned about 14 and a half, 20 degree, 25 degree that is the pressure angle at the pitch point. As uh, this value is uh, this R i is continuously increasing that will lead to that value. Otherwise, if R i is equal to R b, we know that is equal to 1 the pressure angle will be 0. So, generally we do not use uh, contact up to the base point, we keep some clearance. So, there should not be any digging action, there should not be much problem as we keep slightly away from that. So, there will be always some finite value greater than 0 and maximum value we can say leads to the base uh, whatever we have been designing and after assembly what has been achieved. So, we after assembly if initially design value is 20 degree and after assembly it is a 22 uh, degree or 23 degree that will be max value in this case. Now, what we talk about uh, gear profile and we say that this is the positive drive and it need to go in a some spacing that is why the positive drive will happen otherwise there will not be any positive drive. So, what should be the spacing? So, the spacing should be slightly more than the thickness of thickness of gear uh, obviously that this complete uh, width of the uh, gear teeth. If it is a uh, slightly more than that what will be happening th we can avoid the jamming. If this protruded surface is going in some slot naturally if the distance available uh, distance is lesser than the width of this uh, protruded surface naturally there will be jamming action there will be push fit and then uh, there will not be smooth drive. Second thing is that there is a possibility of change in the temperature, there is a possibility of increase in the temperature and we know every material generally gets expanded on uh, application of temperature. So, there is a possibility of this profile uh, getting expanded. So, we need to keep uh, some sort of uh, uh, room for that, uh, so that we can think about the compensation for thermal expansion of the teeth. These are the positive points of the backlash, but there are certain negative points of the backlash. What are those negative points? First thing is that if there is a backlash and if there is a discontinued motion, we say that uh, gear wheel is rotating 10 degree in uh, anti clockwise and after that is a rotating back in uh, clockwise um, by 10 degree. So, there is an oscillation and that is going to create a more problem. If there is a clearance that power transmitted for the few degree will be lost it will change back. And another thing is that as a there is a clearance available, it has a room to vibrate and a vibrating condition it will start vibrating and it will be knocking, it will start knocking hammering at the surface, then it will cause a more wear that is a problem. So, we need to have a some sort of trade off between uh, spacing and no spacing. We require a spacing to avoid the jamming, to avoid the uh, um, problem related to thermal expansion which is the compensate for thermal expansion. Similarly, we have uh, we do not want a spacing from the vibration point of view, we do not want a spacing uh, so that it should not create a vibration it may not should not make a noise in that case and uh, from the power loss point of view also. So, we need to have uh, some trade off. Now, uh, but we discussed initially about uh, gear have an advantage uh, of a torque ratio. Um, uh, magnification of the torque, maybe say from 20 Newton to 40 Newton meter, uh, 40 Newton meter to 60 Newton meter, 100 Newton meter, 200 Newton meter, but there is always some limit. We cannot go keep on going the 100 times, 1000 times like that, there will be some limit on that. Now, the limit comes from a uh, number of points and uh, what we say the torque ratio and velocity ratio and uh, uh, we can uh, quantify in similar manner. So, generally the gear is a spur gear, interesting what is the spur gear? We talk about the gears only, now we are talking about new word or the new thing uh, word comes as a spur gear. So, wherever gear teeth they are parallel, the length of the gear teeth is parallel to the axis that will turn out to be a spur gear and we are fixing some limit torque limit or is with the velocity ratio as a 7 to 1 or 1 to 7 for spur gears. Possibility is that if we con, uh, if we go for a larger one what will happen diameter is continuously going to increase and there may not be availability of that much space. So, say from the size of the gear wheel or uh, gear box size gear wheel size need to be limited. 
Otherwise, if the gear size continuously increases, we need to have a box which contain the lubricant, the size will continuously increase and we do not want that kind of thing. So, we to keep that check, we required uh, some limit on a um, size to if we want 10 to 1 ratio, we want 40 to 1 ratio, what should we do in that situations? There is another way, we say that uh, for higher speed reduction, we can go for the multi staging maybe slightly uh, maybe say that some more number of shaft can be utilized and we can think about the multi staging maybe say in one stage we are thinking about 1 to 7 or 1 to 6 or 1 to 5 and second stage again 1 to 5 1 to 5 so in this case 5 into 5 will turn out to 25 and it can go to the third stage 1 to 5 it will turn out to 125 so that is uh, going to give us a compact design we don't require that much larger diameter because a uh, larger diameter again the manufacturing will be a problem it cannot be so st easily standardized so that's why we prefer multi staging and this one example is uh, one uh, gearbox uh, is shown a photograph of the one gearbox is shown here you can see the shaft has a two gear uh, wheel one gear wheel other gear wheel one is a larger other is a smaller so this larger to smaller this larger to be slightly smaller then uh, there is a larger and smaller and we can combine this it's a typical example of uh, um, gearbox uh, used in automobile which have a uh, 4 to 5 uh, ratios and we know the gear 1, gear 2, gear 3, gear ratio 4 as uh, we keep on uh, changing we say gear ratio will uh, first gear will give maximum torque and final gear will give uh, same rotational speed as the uh, engine speed or uh, we can say slightly more than also is possible but we need to account uh, lubrication properly we need to design properly. It. So, there is a possibility of multi staging and uh, what we say these are um, uh, also can be named as a compounded uh, gear trains. Simple gear train only one shaft uh, one shaft one gear, compounded gear train one shaft having more than two uh, more than one gear pair on that obviously gear, gear wheel on that. So, compounded gear train we require uh, is uh, useful to save the space which is the current demand. We do not have that much space or um, to find if we are talking about a mobility point of view naturally we require a compact size and compact size wherever compact size comes we can think about the multi stage gears or compounded gear trains. Now, in this uh, slide particularly I mentioned about the spoke gear and we say the 1 to 7 ratio and this is a typical example of the spoke gear. We can see that this is the uh, this tooth uh, length is uh, straight and axis is also moving in the same direction we say whatever the direction of the axis this gear uh, um, profile is in the same direction. So, the uh, straight or they are in parallel and um, they, they do not have any angle. So, that is a spur gear, but there is a possibility of some sort of helix we want to increase the effective area of contact. Well, if you increase the factory area of contact what will happen there is a possibility of gradual engagement, gradual disengagement. So, when we talk about the high speed operation and we do not want excessive vibration. So, there should be gradual engagement, gradual disengagement and we prefer helical gears in those situations. That is why uh, we can think about the gear, uh, helical gear ratio and uh, that is uh, slightly more than spur gear ratio that is a 10 to 1. There is another possibility we can think about the internal gears and internal helical gears internal uh, uh, spur gears the gear ratio in this case can be kept as a 4 to 8 we are not talking about the 1 to 1 we are not talking even a 1 to 2 because a gear wheel generally inter having internal teeth have a larger dimension. So, most preferable range will be in this case a gear ratio 4 to 8 talking about the bevel gear is another term we are utilizing we talk about the spur gear we talk about the um, helical gear, we are talking about the bevel gear. Slightly difficult to think over if uh, we have already learned the machine uh, design uh, course, then there is no problem. But there is a bevel gear which works with the cone geometry. So, that these are the cylinder, cylindrical geometry and cylindrical geometry, they are rolling. Uh, one geometry is rolling, uh, so one cylinder is rotating, rotating, other will rotate about that if the axis are fixed. Now, there is a possibility of cone. So, there is a cone shape over here and there will be another cone shape, but the axis are at a 90 degree, they are going to intersect that is going to give us a bevel gear. Obviously, that truncated, obviously, that uh, frustum of the cone can be used as a bevel gear. 
And similarly, we have a cylindrical worm game. It's too much, uh, too many terms have been utilized without giving photographs. That's why we are going to show some photographs in next slide. See, this is a helical game. You can see there is a some sort of helix. Maybe if I there is a shaft axis, and there will be some angle between this and the shaft axis. This is a helical gear. But as the length is tapered, I can compare the street length with the taper length. We know the taper length, the length will be more for the same uh, fixed ends. And if the length is more, naturally engagement will be more. If there is a more engagement, there will be less and noise, more surface contact happening and there is a gradual engagement and disengagement is possible. And uh, generally this kind of classifications are coming based on the shaft axis and uh, relation of the tooth profile or tooth axis, uh, so the tooth length with axis. In this case some sort of hallux angle is provided and there is a, uh, there are other combination also, we can uh, use a different terminology for that. Say we want gears having a parallel axis, in a helical axis, helical gear um, as well as a spur gear shaft of the axis shaft will be parallel and based on that we can say they are spur gear and helical gears and they can be named as a rolling gears. Reason being in rolling gears sliding is lesser, there will be more rolling action. In a similar category we can keep bevel gear also, they have intersecting axis, but classification is based on the shaft axis, shaft axis parallel then is a spur gear or helical gear, shaft axis are intersecting not necessarily 90 degree, it can be a 60 degree, it can be 70 degree, it can be 80 degree, depending on the what kind of shafts we are using, what kind of assembly we require and what is the final, um, is a, what is the final uh, requirement from that uh, assembly. So, there is a possibility of intersecting axis as a bevel gear. And they are, uh, uh, this is the particularly in this case, we are using a helical, we are showing helical gears, they have a relatively noise free operation, they are quieter. Only the disadvantage is that you can see over here that because of the axis or is the axis and uh, this uh, gear length or uh, tooth length, they are not parallel, there will be some one component along the axis also. Always the gear should bear tangential load or some sort of uh, radial load, but in, in this case uh, additional component is coming that is going to create a more problem. We require uh, some extra bearing. Sometime we use a gear profile in this side and just uh, opposite which is the same angle and opposite side we use other profile uh, that is known as uh, double helical gear or herringbone gears. We say that one helical gear is like this and we use other gear having a axis like this and just uh, this gear uh, length uh, perpendicular to not perpendicular having some inclination with this. So, whatever the component this gear is going to generate an axial direction same should component should be generated by other gear in opposite direction. So, the axial force is cancelled out there itself, it is not going to get propagated, it is not going to the go to bear inside. That is a herring on herring uh, bone uh, gears, and that is uh, important to cancel the axial force. But disadvantage is that manufacturing of those kind of gears is difficult. So we generally avoid as far as possible from complexity point of view, from cost point of view, and if we don't have any choice, we can go ahead with herring bone gear also. This is the bevel gear, what I mentioned and we say that is complex geometry. You can see here bevel gear also has a spur gears. Spur uh, is a more like an um, axis is a parallel, uh, not to some extent is inclined, but if lengthwise we say that they are, they are, they are tapered, but parallel to the axis. So, these are the, they are strict, they are not have the helical. There is a possibility this uh, length can be in a helix angle also there is a possibility of a spiral. So, that is why we say bevel gear can be divided in a straight length, helical length and a spiral length. Naturally, as a straightness is reducing, engagement will increase and noise operation uh, will obviously, the noise generation will reduce. So, the straight teeth will be least preferred compared to helical from noise point of view uh, compared to the uh, spiral, it, uh, helical will be least preferred, but the complexity manufacturing, manufacturing cost is going to increase with this kind of profiles. 
and we mentioned that bevel gear, helical gear and spur gear. Where the axes are either parallel or shaft axes are either parallel or intersecting, but they are in same plane, they are coplanar. We can name those gears as a rolling gears, reason being the motion at the contact surface is happening primarily because of the rolling motion. They have relatively small sliding. An interesting thing, they will not be having any sliding at the pitch point. So, they give a the good positive engagement, relatively lesser sliding and that is why these gears have a higher efficiency. We talk about efficiency even 90 percent, 95 percent, that is a very high side. But other gears where they are not in plane, they are uh, in different planes, the shaft axis are in different planes, then there is a possibility of higher sliding and that is going to uh, lose the energy, uh, lose the efficiency. That is why we say that they, these uh, gears can be named as rolling cross axis gears. Rolling can be removed, we say they are cross axis gears. You can see axis of the this wheel and axis of this, they are not going to intersect it anywhere, they are not parallel. So, not parallel, not intersecting and they can be treated in totally different plane, a single plane cannot contain these two axes. That is why, that is why they are kept in a separate category. Say that in this kind of gears, what is going to happen? We get a mixture of rolling and sliding at the contact surface and wherever there is a sliding, we require lubrication. The tribology is going to play a major role and wherever there is a rolling, there will be contact fatigue. The way we have estimated the bearing lives, which have was happening because of contact fatigue. So, that will be a major uh, main uh, feature in those cases, right. So, we require lubrication or uh, special um, attention need to be paid when whenever this kind of uh, gears we are using. So, this is a what we are showing a warm gear, in this can you see the dimension, this is a larger dimension compared to this dimension. That is why warm gear they have very high speed reduction our torque amplification can reach to the 40 also. So, that whatever the torque has been transmitted to the this shaft 40 times can reach to the other shaft. So, that is um, um, high torque transmission uh, capabilities of a warm gear, but there will be high sliding and that is going to reduce their efficiency. They are not very efficient, but where the load carrying capacity is required they are robust. There are other possible combinations also we can say helical gears, but having cross axis. So, you can see that this helical gear and this helical gear they are cross axis. Because of the this geometry they do not make a line contact, they make only point contact and whenever there is a point contact naturally stresses will be very high, load carrying capacity will be lesser. That is why this kind of gear pair is used for the relatively lesser torque. And this gear pair is been used for the larger truck, while this cross uh, helical cross axis gear is used for the lower uh, lower uh, torque transmission, which is that um, their uh, gear ratio or torque ratio will not be that high. In addition, we have uh, some variation in the bevel gear. What is happening in this case? Axis of this shaft and axis of this shaft they are not going to intersect. They will remain at the some distance. We say the offset, there will be some sort of uh, gap between the axis and the, there will be continuous rotation and uh, other things will happen. But because of this gap, this is a, because of the um, offset between the axis, sliding will be on a higher side and these gears will be, and they are known as a hypod gears. Again, very used, uh, useful uh, gears, they uh, are commonly used uh, in uh, automobiles. We say that these gears are literally lesser preferred because of the low efficiency, but from torque point of view, from torque amplification point of view, these gears can be utilized, particularly warm gears can be utilized, mostly is used for the hosting purposes. We talked so much about the sliding and rolling and we say that spur gear has a lesser rolling, but spur itself as always a parallel shaft gears have a lesser sliding, a more rolling. When we talk about uh, warm gear, we say it has a high sliding and lesser rolling, so the efficiency will be lost. 
So, let us uh, have a slight uh, description of the detail uh, detailing of the what is a rolling, what is a sliding. May be known, but just for completion, uh, we are, uh, um, we are I am going to describe something on this slide. So, let us say this is uh, one wheel and is going to roll on a straight surface or we say curved surface which has a much larger radius. So, this is a rotation that is showing there is a clockwise rotation and there is a no um, uh, fixation of this what will happen because of this rotation it will try to translate also move along this axis along this uh, edge. Maybe after 180 degree as a half rotation this point of contact will be change to this point of contact. Not this is not kind of point contact, whatever the point contact P over here, this point is reaching here or we say that every time new point is going to come in a contact. Maybe say whatever the point here, you say A here and B here, A is getting shifted over here and B coming over here. So, initially B was not in contact, now B is coming in a contact and uh, this, uh, this distance is equal to pi r whatever the half width, whatever the, this axial translation is that translational motion is equal to pi r. After uh, completion of rotation, whatever the initial position, the same position is regained over here. So, whole uh, this uh, length is a pi d now. Circumference has been developed and uh, we are getting pure rolling motion. Point of contact they are continuously changing, they are not on the same point. So, there is a pure rolling 100 percent rolling there is no change in this. Now, if we talk about uh, some, uh, um, we talk about some uh, pit, we say talk about some pit in over here, you can see this is a some sort of uh, penetration over here and now if this uh, disc is going to rotate this disc, uh, disc is going to rotate over here, what is going to happen? As there is no continuous motion, this disc will not be able to translate, it will keep rotating, but there is no translation and uh, that is uh, going to create a more sliding in this situation and we say that the sliding is a dominating on this case. That is true, the first case is a rolling, second case it is a sliding. Right? Uh, so, there is uh, some difference uh, rolling and sliding. Now, we can elaborate little more on the, this rolling and sliding by really showing a tooth profile and uh, having a contact. You can see this having a one gear 1, gear 2 and with a pinion and gear and there is a some contact. I cannot see anything over here, so let me magnify it. See this is a magnification, there is a point contact or line contact over here. Now, as the shaft is rotating naturally this point of contact will change and this is after a few maybe a few degree or maybe say some milliseconds this point of contact is going to change point of contact is changed to this point of contact is changing after rotation. So, same portion is not there that is that, that means same point is not in contact, but there is a, a, a change in a point and that is why there is a rolling action. But there is a another problem, we think about the pitch circle diameter and above pitch circle diameter below pitch circle diameter. So, initially this position is below pitch circle diameter and after that this is above pitch circle diameter and we know rolling option uh, rolling happens only at the pitch circle. That is why this point will have a some sliding, this point will have a some sliding, they are not on a pitch circle. So, there will be maybe sliding in this case and sliding in this case will be in reverse direction, opposite direction, but sliding will be there and that is going to generate some sort of friction and that, that is going to cause some friction that is why we require lubrication in those situations. What we can say from this slide we say with involute profile of the gears only one contact position experience pure rolling that is on a pitch point. Other than pitch point, it is uh, it's going to get a combination of rolling and sliding and so that as contact moves away or to us, if there is a pitch point over here, the contact is moving toward the pitch point and uh, at pitch point is fine that moving towards the pitch point there will be sliding, at pitch point sliding will turn out to be 0, away from the pitch point again the sliding will start and will be maximum till that contact remains. 
after that again uh, there will be disengagement. So, there will not be any motion transmitted from the that gear uh, tooth, but other gear tooth will come the process will continue in the situation. Now, this can be further elaborated mathematically quantify uh, we can do a quantification on that using this slide. We have shown this same figure earlier we say that this is the pinion, this is a gear smaller diameter, larger diameter their gear profile will start from the base circle and this is the point here this is another base circle of the gear. So, point B here connect this, this will be the line of action this will be the line of action. Now, if we think from the tangent uh, from a gear ratio point of view what we need to say the tangential velocity must be equal. We know the whatever the diameter the tangential velocity of the um, this pinion and tangential velocity of this uh, gear need to be same that is the basics uh, or the, the, this is the basic fundamental of the gear. If we cannot equate we say the r into omega need to be constant and if that is why the based on the diameter ratio based on the radius ratio we find what will be the reduction in the speed and because of that there will be amplification of the torque. Now, if I try to take any point on the, this line of action maybe say this point is i, this point is i, I can connect this i with uh, this center, I can connect this i with this center. So, there will be a radius, this is the base radius and this radius will be more than that. Similarly, if I connect this with this, so this it uh, base radius compared to base radius this uh, this radius will be slightly more. Now, if I try to find out what will be the velocity perpendicular to the radius, in first case I can find out pinion omega p is known to us and r p i, r is the r is the radius of pinion and i is a point. So, this is a r p i. Uh, similarly, in the gear case the uh, velocity is a perpendicular to the uh, radius that is omega g that is uh, angular velocity into r g i. The g um, uh, we say that r g is a uh, radius of the gear at the point a we can connect these points r gear g i. Now, there is a uh, this is shown this line is being connected and the velocity perpendicular to this that is the velocity which is shown here v p i. Same thing in the gear this is connected with the point and this velocity is perpendicular. Now, these velocities are not moving perpendicular to the line of center, they are having some uh, inclination with that. So, need to be resolved in two components one will be perpendicular other will be like this. So, one component is going to separate and uh, um, maybe say impose some load on the bearing if we say that this shaft uh, this gear is mounted on a bearing this gear is mounted this pinion is mounted on a bearing this gear is mounted on a pinion, uh, bearing. So, the bearing is going to experience some radial load and other uh, 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 component will be tangential direction tangential to the line of center which is more desirable. Uh, velocity which is uh, perpendicular to this I will say when uh, they are coming in a contact the gear teeth are coming in a contact velocity which is a tangential to the gear profile that is a more important those need to be equal if they are equal then there will not be penetration of the gear teeth otherwise there will be penetration of the gear teeth. So, we require tangential and uh, that is a TPI the tangential velocity that can be given as same velocity VPI into sin phi that is a pressure angle at the point what is the pressure angle at that point that is going to give us a component along this direction. Same thing in this case uh, velocity tangential uh, uh, velocity of the gear at the point i is given omega g r g i that is the radius into uh, sin uh, of the pressure angle at the point i. So, this is uh, when we try to uh, see the p circle this will be our uh, uh, in this case particularly it will turn out to be r this will turn out to be r p and uh, pressure angle will be common in the both the cases both the cases pressure angle will be same. The pressure angle will be uh, move out omega p into r p minus omega g into r g and that will be equal to 0 tangential velocity will be equal and that with the pitch point there will not be any change in velocities 
of the pinion and the gear they will be equivalent that is why there will be perfect rolling. Otherwise there will be difference and if there is any difference at any point there will be sliding and that is a harmful that is a disadvantages. We should try to keep this minimum otherwise if you are not able to keep minimum and there is a some sort of hindrance or there is a some sort of geometric constraints and uh, we say that from design point of view we cannot achieve that then we require a lubrication. We need to provide proper lubrication. No, this is a what we are talking about the um, simple lisper gear where parallel teeth are there, but there is a possibility of a helical gear there will be some extra angle along the axis. And in case of the cross axis rolling uh, uh, gears because their profile is a different manner axis are different the sliding will be more. If there is a more sliding naturally there will be more efficiency loss. And if there is efficiency loss, naturally more heat generation will be there. That is why I say in the case of the cross axis rolling gears, velocity component in axial direction, and this is going to cause uh, some sliding at the rolling points. Rolling point, otherwise, in this case, there will not be any sliding at the pitch point, but here there will be sliding even at the pitch point, which is a harm, uh, harmful, or uh, we need to account that. So, that is why we said we required friction calculation. And uh, once we know the what is the friction calculation, we think about uh, it's uh, because of the friction there will be lubrication requirement. So, we will be discussing those things in our next lecture based on uh, friction and lubrication. Thank you. Thank you.